Hey everyone, today we're going to look at a three-tier implementation of the Amazon Elastic Container Service, or ECS. If you're interested in these kinds of topics and other news on AWS, consider subscribing to my channel. Maybe you'll like it. In order to understand why the Elastic Container Service exists and why services are built like this, we must look a little bit into the history. In the beginning, people usually used to have one server or web server where they would put all their data and their programs. This had a big problem with separation, fault tolerance, repeatability, and reliability. The next idea that came were virtual servers. This would mean you put many virtual servers in one server. But the downside was that you still had to have a full operating system on each of these virtual machines, which would clog up the system. Also, you had to have certain deployment scripts to set up your infrastructure to whatever you needed. The most popular concept these days are containers. As far as the history goes, Google had built a system called Borg, which is now known as Kubernetes. It would optimally distribute workloads and use as much of a server possible while wasting no resources. Now, Kubernetes is not recommended for small companies because the maintenance workload is quite large. ECS is a great alternative, and this is why AWS built it. ECS is a lot more managed out of the box and much easier to handle. It comes in two modes, with EC2 instances or Fargate back. Fargate is a taste of serverlessness, but we're not going as far as Amazon Lambda. We have still more control about our system and what we want the image to look like. In order to set up our three-tier infrastructure with ECS, we need to start with a VPC, and we're going to use three subnets to spread the system across three availability zones for fault tolerance. This means each availability zone can be faulty or can have an outage and our system will not be affected. We then have the ECS cluster and the service and individual task definitions. These will run our back and front end code. We're going to be using Terraform and TerraGrunt. Terraform is an infrastructure as code tool. It has become very popular in the recent years because it gives the advantages of source control for infrastructure definition and therefore lets you easily repeat certain setups. Terraform especially is popular because it is vendor neutral. There is vendor specific implementations like, like AWS CloudFormation or Azure Resource Manager. TerraGrant adds some functionality that we're going to need for the backend. What we mean with Terraform backend is that we need some place to store our state and log file. So something that will allow us to use Terraform with multiple users at the same time. It will also help with having different stages. So why do we need stages? Stages are sometimes also called environment or to test things. You can have multiple environments like a development, test and production environment for your system. You can then deploy from the staging to the test and then to the live environments. This is called either a blue green deployment where you switch in one go. Another popular method is the canary deployment where you would switch out a bit of traffic like say 5% at a time to test if the new updates are running smoothly and only then move over the entire system. This is popular for consumer websites. In the B2B world, it is not so common. TerraGrant helps us with some functionality that is missing from Terraform. So we can reuse a few parts of the templates. We don't need to repeat ourselves as often. For a good example, for a folder structure for our setup, we can look at this tutorial. As a folder structure for TerraGrant, we're going to split our folders by account, region, and environment. The TerraGrant files contain the configuration of our individual stages and will be copied in by TerraGrant into the Terraform definition files. Then we have the Terraform modules. For Terraform, we're going to have a separate file for our VPC. We're going to start with the VPC and add three subnets. Put the Terraform block and an ECS cluster in. Then we have our ECS service. The ECS service contains the task definition, the desired machine count, the minimum and maximum for deployment. We have a reference to our load balancer and to our network configuration. Then we have an ECS task, where we inline define the machine size we need and the IAM role that is going to be used for execution. Then for our load balancer, we have four components. We have the load balancer itself that contains references to the subnets, the type of the load balancer and the security groups. 
we have the load balancer listener where we can set the protocol. So HTTP or HTTPS if we want to use SSL. In this case, we will only show HTTP. Then we have a load balancer listener rule with a priority where one is the highest priority, an action and a condition at what point we want to reroute where. And lastly, we have to load balance a target group. For the target group, we're going to use the HTTP protocol internally. That means if we had used SSL to connect in from the outside world, we would terminate it here. This will be fine for most cases. And we have a health check destination. This address will be called by the load balancer to assess if the targets are actually valid or in a faulty state. In our Terragrant file, we include the local files. We have our provider, which is going to be an S3 bucket and a DynamoDB table. Terragrant is going to take care of this, so we can leave the blocks empty in the Terraform file. Then we have our common.terragrant.hcl, where we have the locals for the app name, domain name, hosted zone, and whatever we need. Under infrastructure, we have the account Terragrant HGL, where we have the account name and the ID. Then we have one for each region we are going to use. And lastly, for the specific environment, or sometimes called stage. Here's our service configuration JSON. Here we have a for each through different services. Here, the API and the front end. We have the build path for our environment and the secrets JSON. To deploy our infrastructure, we only need to call Terragrant init and Terragrant deploy. This is to be done in the specific folder for the environment we want to deploy. So if you want to deploy EU central and test, you go into this folder and execute it here. Next, we're going to set up our GitHub actions. This means that on a pull request or a simple push, our entire infrastructure will deploy and update. First, we have a setup job where we check out the repo. We install the HCQ, configure the AWS credentials to get access, and we set the environment variables for Terraform. We can distinguish between push and pull requests and the branch we want to deploy. Next, we have a job to deploy. Here we log into AWS again, collect our local variables from the common Terragrant file and set our app name. We then log into our container registry ECR, where our container images will be stored. We call docker build and push. And lastly, we have a third job for the infrastructure updates. We again start by logging into AWS. We then set up Terraform on the action runner. Then we can run init, plan and apply. If we go to the AWS console, we can now see our cluster, service, and task definition, as well as the repo that was created. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. If you want to learn more about AWS, subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos. Okay, bye.